Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic is the term for minuscule horror fiction, mostly posted on the telecommunication boards. It includes any and all related subgenres. Join three rapscallions, jabberwalking, plague monster, slime beast, Family Values Abysme, and Semi-Transparent Poltergeist Dead Pallet as they read all stories throughout the history of the Halls of Horror, paragraph by paragraph, and jib-jab all the while. From interpersonal murder procedurals, to bizarre mind-altering scribblings, and everything you'd find in Weird Fiction Monthly, they read it and give thoughtful commentary for your bemusement. You better believe it! Kick it forward to the opening sketch, music man! Look what I found, fellas. A Zenith model 9S232A made in 1938. So what? Uh, I'm a busy. I know about audio equipment. <laughs> oh, come on, that's common knowledge. No, 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 it's it's an actual demon with time and reality bending powers. I found it in Antarctica. We already hunted for supernatural stuff in Antarctica, and we didn't find anything. Except for that one thing. Oh, I searched the places that we didn't search. I guess that makes sense. That's the only place we didn't search. Okay, what does it do? It holds the power to put a new subgenre into the halls of horror. Uh, that sounds dumb. Count me out. No, no, wait. Check this out. Well, 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 looks like you fine Chabberwockies have discovered the whereabouts of the Halls of Horror and its charismatic steward, me. It grew a body? And a voice. So I take it you think you got what it takes to put a brand new fantastical mesmerizing subgenre of horror literature into the Halls of Horror. Yeah. Sure, why not? Wait, how long will this take to do? But a mere collection of a couple of exactly two forted nights, my good sirs. What is that in Eastern Standard Time? Four episodes of this show? Too long. Never mind. Oh, it seems my spooktacular challenges have rattled your very bones out of your anatomy. Well, very well. I'll take my leave back to the underground Antarctic caves at the Halls of Horror. Wait, 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 wait. Ignore them. Listen, guys. It'd mean a lot to me if we could get Ashcan Horror put into the Halls of Horror. So help me out with this. Shouldn't you be reading the rest of the Fleming storage units? Or writing a horror story about gay sex? But doing this will legitimize both of those actions. Just help me out with this and we can get this over with. No way we'll instantly regret dealing with- Oh, how terminally, gut-wrenchingly, universe-endingly rude of me. I, I am an eternal force, both dark and eldritch, with the ability to bend time and space in on itself like a Mobius strip, red, and burn across monolithic white tablets in a sea of deep, dark black in your mind's eye. I am the culmination of your genetic memory, rendering itself out in the form of epigenetics and cross-pollinating them with the polysybolic parabola of current Mimetic trends. I am unable to not know which is not seen by those who do not know about the unknown knowns. I am known as Radiohead. And I'm a creep. And I'm... Shit. Creep is the only Radiohead song I know. Okay, so you agree to help out. Sure, it's only a small burden that we need to bear for an entire month. Okay, I'll help too. And by that, I mean I'll be drunk the entire time and you can't rely on me for anything. But I'll be in the same room, if that makes you happy. All right, fellas. This works by having the three of you solve puzzles about... Hard no. Nope. <clears throat> All right, fellows. This works by having the three of you read classic horror stories in the vignette dimension, a pocket universe where your knowledge of the past and present bend in on themselves. If you can read three classic spine-tingling tales without losing your sanity, you'll be allowed to enter one story into the halls as a test. And if that story holds up in quality, your genre will be official. When do we enter this vignette dimension? Mention. Oh, but my lads, you're all ready here. Whoa, we're in the Overlook Hotel from the Kubrick version of The Shining. What do you mean? This is clearly the Nostromo from Alien. Hmm, actually, this is just a McDonald's after an explosion goes off in the ice cream machine. We should probably kick this to the cold open, white boys. 
don't be surprised when they come for you, because they will come for you eventually. At first, they came for pregnant Spider-Man, and they said mm-hmm. nothing, because I was not into Mpreg. <laughs> then, they came for, I don't know, white slavery Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> white slavery Spongebob? Yes. <laughs> Spongebob, what are you doing? Oh, Squidward, you have a big nose, and they're for, for Jewish. Oh my god. <laughs> Here's a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a crate full of lasses to move by sundown. <laughs> okay. is, is is SpongeBob Asian? Um, yes. Okay. I'm is glad. he from the Bikini Atoll or some shit like that? Well, Bikini Atoll. <laughs> no, he he moved to the Bikini Atoll, so oh. we don't know where he's from. Hmm. Hmm. A sponge of mysterious origins. You say. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We don't know where he's from because he secretly snuck out of North Korea. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Yeah, they were, they were bringing by Kim Jong, Kim Jong Un or Kim Jong Il? Kim Jong Il. After Kim Jong Il died, everybody was wailing and crying in the streets. They're state mandated. No, wailing is what they do in, in Japan. Okay, sure. And they're bringing the body by and you just heard from the cat. And they were like, oh, he's got to get out of here. It's state-mandated sadness. Speaking of state-mandated <laughs> sadness. What, what, a, what a good band name. You used to play bass for state-mandated sadness. Uh-huh. You, you played for SMS, I guess? SMS? Indeed, I did. Hmm. I also played for TTH, the Telltale Heart. God damn it. Ah. Uh, by one uh, Edgar Alan Poey. Poey. Mr. Poey. Huh. Mr. Uh, Poey. It's come time to evict you. I'm afraid you're far too drunk to live here. <laughs> We've got a picture here of Mr. Edgar Allan Poe. I believe it's this is uh, proper pronunciation, his proper pronoun. And it says 1809 to 1849. So I'm assuming since the author is dead, we don't have to ask permission? Nice. Oh, right. cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that's that's uh, what we're just going to start doing from now on. We're if we want to uh, adapt something into an audio narration, we're we'll just kill, kill the person, author. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this be fine. Yes. Copyright this bitch. Boof. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I wish that's how it worked. Uh, let's hey, let's get into it. Let's see what this uh this uh old school creepypasta has has on offer guys i'm gonna make some predictions before we read the telltale heart by mr poe i'm gonna predict that we're gonna see a killer in a white hoodie and or a guy with no face in a suit or a wendigo or someone uh putting their feet on lettuce yeah god <laughs> no oh, man, this this story is starting off terrible yeah. true all caps. Yeah, no don't sleep. start off. Everything don't... here is true. Tired, yeah. Tired of these no sleep openings, guys. <laughs> don't start off your creepy pasta with that goddamn this is a real story shit. Uh, it is awful. So we're all, all on the same page, right? This is mm-hmm. going to be a dumpster fire. Yes. Yeah, off the bat, like in record timing. True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am. But and angry. why <laughs> yes. But why? Will you say that I am mad? The disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. Oh, look, guys, the grammar in this terrible. Yeah. It's like all, all old English and shit. I don't get it. I would say it's a non native English speaker, probably. Can probably. we get a, can we get a t shirt that says, I had been and am and angry? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and it's a picture of Poe in a hoodie. <laughs> I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. Now, oh, mm-hmm. we're referencing hell. Right. Emo. Oh, yeah. It's a little I, melodramatic. I sat there in apartment 666 on the 13th floor. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> How, then, am I mad? Hearken! And observe how healthily, how calmly I tell you the whole story. I'm not mad, bro, because you can tell by like how I'm talking. Like I'm not mad. Right. Uh, you're you're the one that's mad, bro. So when he says the disease has sharpened my senses, what disease is he talking about? Alcoholism? Madness. Um, perving on your underage cousin. God now that's it. disturbing. <laughs> and kosher on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I will choke DP with a trochee till his cheeks are teary. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All it took was two lines this time. It was pretty good. <laughs> See, I actually know that one because I I like Watsky. Uh-huh. Yeah, with that, like his, he was on that one, and also uh, Shakespeare versus Seuss, and both of those his portions are really damn cool. Hmm. So I I want to point out though that Mr. Poe has started the sentence with the word "and," which you never do. Nope, never can't do. Nope, anathema. Never can't do it. <laughs> It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain. By the way, but once Abysme is your favorite K-pop band, uh, NKD, NCD, Never Can Do. I don't know enough about K-pop to come up with a witty retort here. Aw. Sorry. Uh, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night, a lot like my ex-wife. Object, there was none. Object, there was none? Hmm. Object, there was none? Point. There was no objection? There Guys, a... just pr- proofread your stories, okay? Yeah. Seriously, what the fuck does that mean? Passion. Ob- I, th- I think object none. there was none is supposed to mean that he uh, his apartment was empty. No object? Think, sure. <laughs> like, who knows? Who knows? Sure. Passion, there was none. Only the dark side. I loved the old man. Oh. Oh. Mm. So that's what this is about. Okay. Well, we don't know the gender of our narrator. We don't, but uh, some uh, some this octogenarian n- romance going on here. This might not be gay. <laughs> May- the, mayhaps. The, the narrator might be Edwina Eileen Poe. I don't know. <laughs> Edwina? Yeah. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. Uh, but I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had the eye of a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. So, a little obsessive, this dude. It's the eye of the vulture. It's the thrill of the film. Kill. All right. So, this starts off like I loved the old man. I liked him. He was a great guy, but he had a fucked up eye, so I decided to kill him. Uh, if you're going to write a narrator like this in your story, try not to make them, like, unreliable. You know, just try to try to tell a pretty direct story. You know, don't make us question anything, right? And well, it's, he, he's it's, saying that he's reliable. Yeah. And that's well, enough it, for it me. Must be. And I would hazard against front-loading your first paragraph with, I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Now let me explain. <laughs> I'm not like, crazy, I'm just a little unwell right now. That, oh, fuck that eye. Uh-huh. Now, this is the point. You fancy me mad. I don't fancy you at all, bro. That's not what, that's not what you were saying before we started recording. <laughs> mad men know nothing, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. Is that dissimulation? Is that correct? <laughs> Abysme, you're a lawyer. <laughs> uh... Have you ever dissimulated a client? <laughs> <laughs> Concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character. Oh, see, he does know it. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, about midnight, I turned the latch on his door and opened it. Oh, so gently. And then... Me, I'm about to kill him. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Edgar Allan Poe. Me. <laughs> Is that Growl and Poe, purple guy? And then, when I had made an opening sufficient for my head, hot, I put in a dark lantern, very hot, mm. all closed, closed, that no light shone out, and then I thrust in my head. <laughs> oh, you would have laughed to see how cunningly I thrust it in. <laughs> I, was a, I was quite the cunning linguist when I thrust my head in. I just threw just, it in there. It was like just shoving old a ham- man in the night. Apparently, that, okay. <laughs> it was like it was like thrusting a ham down a hallway. I moved it slowly, very, very slowly, so that I might not <laughs> disturb the old man's sleep. This is really <laughs> okay. Now it's getting. Like uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. jokes aside, this is a little erotic. Mm, a little erotic. A little erotic coming to ABC. <laughs> ABC family. A little erotic. You can. A little erotic. <laughs> there's no rule in the, there's no rule that says a first grader can't be a stripper. <laughs> this Christmas, a little erotic. <laughs> Epstein Productions presents. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> a real killer. It took me an hour. Epstein. Say what? An Epstein Schneider production. <laughs> <laughs> a Max Weinfield production. It took me an hour to place my whole head within the opening so far that I could see him as he lay upon the bed. <laughs> That's what? how it works. You gotta work your way up. Yeah. 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 All right, let me start over. <laughs> Would a man met the man man? <laughs> My favorite DC man, man. character. News. <laughs> it is what, I. What are, your, good. what are your superpowers? <laughs> I'm good at opening pickle jars. <laughs> it is I, Man Man, the power with the power of a different man. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck that up. What, what? What are your weaknesses? I really have problems putting the toilet seat down. <laughs> Would a mad man have been so wise as this? And then, when my head was well in the room, I undid the lantern cautiously. Oh, so cautiously. Cautiously. I, I think they typed that twice by mistake mm -hmm. before, when they submitted it to whatever website. Yeah, what is this? Is this uh, the creepypasta we Kia or something? Yeah, Jesus. gross. For the hinges creaked. I undid it just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. Hey, it's me, Ray! And, th <laughs> and this I did for seven long nights. And eight crazy nights. Every night just at midnight, but I found the eye was always closed, and so it was impossible to do the work. For it was not the old man who vexed me, but his evil eye. And every morning, when day broke, when the day broke, I boldly went, I went boldly into the chamber, and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone, and inquiring how he has passed the night. So you see, he would have been a very good, profound old man, indeed, to suspect that every night, just at twelve, I looked in upon him while he slept. Why didn't he lock the door? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we can agree. Well, what reason would he have to lock the door? He didn't know that this dude was coming to kill him. But I mean, you know, it's the fucking 1800s, my boy. You got Jack the Rippers around every corner. You got, That's true. You got corners got around every fold. Coming in. The damn Irish. Yep. <laughs> just because, just simply alone, the Irish is that's reason enough. Goddamn Irish and their pizza and pasta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who wants a cannoli? Don't you know? <laughs> Upon the eighth night, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. A watch's minute hand moves more quickly than mine did. Mm. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers of my. Sag sagacity. 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 Right. So is is that the properties of Bob Saget? I wish. Because <laughs> that would be great. Everywhere you look, <laughs> everywhere, there's an eye, <laughs> an evil eye looking at you. Mm -hmm. I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. Triumph! Imprisoning me. <laughs> what? All, All that, that I, I see. feel. Wait a minute. <laughs> Absolute <that's> right. try. <laughs> to think that there was opening the door little by little, and he had not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. I ch uh, fairly chuckled at the idea, and per <laughs> and I thought to myself, you have to have a pretty high IQ <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to want to kill a man with a vulture eye. That's right. And, and perhaps he heard me. For he moved on the bed suddenly, as if startled. Now you may think that I drew back, but no. His room was as black as pitch with the thick darkness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> For the shutters were closed, fastened, through fear of robbers. Fear, oh, oh, lock your door. Fears robbers, yeah, but won't lock the door. And so I knew that he could not see the opening of the door, and I kept pushing it on steadily, steadily. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. not much to unpack there. It's no. pretty, pretty straightforward. S spending a I lot mean, of time really ramping up tension that doesn't really seem to be catching for me. Of, I just, on the eighth uh, night, I did the same thing, but slower. Right, okay. right. I, it, it sort of is like, I, I can already tell this story is probably not going to have a good payoff, because we're just going to get a story where, oh, he just killed the guy at the end. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah it's, it's a... It's it's really unfortunate when you can predict where something's going to go. Yeah. And he's just going, like, all's going to happen, he's going to, like, carve out the dude's eye, 
and then take his gold right. and uh, run away. And then there's going to be like a newspaper clipping saying something like, you know, Jack the Ripper, whoever our main character is, you know, escapes into the night. Right. He's going to make, he's going to take the eye. He's going to take the gold. He's going to escape to like California or something. He's going to be sitting there looking at the gold, looking at the eye, gold, eye, gold, eye. He's going to become a video game developer, make a haunted <laughs> game starring James possible. Bond. Yeah. You know what's also possible is uh, they, you know, he just creeps up on other people and goes, shh, go to sleep. Yeah. Stay asleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a really generic you know, the killer story. Right. Yeah. We don't even get the narrator's name either. either so it's also frustrating because it's called the telltale heart. And this entire story has been about an eyeball. Yeah. Yeah. Which is it's, super misleading. Clickbaity. It's, yeah. Uh, if this involves the sugar daddy at some point, <laughs> swear to God, I had my head in and was about to open the lantern when my thumb slipped upon the tin fastening and the old man sprang up in bed crying out, Who's there? Merge! 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 Merge. Someone's after my vulture eye! Homer! I told you to get rid of that! (laughs) Whoa, Cowabunga! Look at all this gold! I kept quite still and said nothing. For a whole hour, I did not move a muscle, and in the meantime, I did not hear him lie down. Mm. He was still sitting up in the bed listening, just as I have done, night after night, hearkening to the death watches in the wall. Just Have you guys seen The Lighthouse yet? From the watches to the wall. No, I haven't seen it. You're talking about like a physical lighthouse? Because I've seen those before, yeah. uh, The movie. Uh, I'm I'm starting to wonder if that was based off of this in any small portion. So they stood there for like an hour. Mm -hmm. We got a time stamp in our creepypasta. (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck? This is like all those things where it's like, I turned on the Nintendo and stared at the screen for what, for like an hour. And it's like, please, come on, please. The old man was asleep, but when my version of the game, he was awake and that was weird. Yeah. Presently, I heard a slight groan. And, (laughs) ooh, I'm, I'm a robber breaking in, ooh. (laughs) <laughs> and I knew it was the groan of mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain or of grief. Oh no, it was the low stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. You could just cut that down and say the guy was scared. Yeah. All this flowery, you know, purple prose. I knew the sound well. Many a night, just at midnight, when all the world slept, it has welled up in from my own bosom. Ooh. So we, it's a, it is a female narrator. Uh huh. Okay. Deepening with its dreadful echo, the terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt and pitied him, although I chuckled at heart. Oh, we're finally getting a mention of a heart. I knew that he had been laying awake ever since the first slight noise when he had turned in the bed. His fears had been ever since growing upon him. He had been trying to fancy them causeless, but could not. He had been saying to himself, <clears throat> It is nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor. Or, hey, yo, it is merely a cricket which has made a single chipe. <laughs> I wasn't sure how the old man spoke. I had never heard him <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he had been trying to comfort himself with these suppositions, but he had found <laughs> all in vain. Yes? I really thought it said... It's a oh, God. He was... <laughs> Ah, uh, sweet relief. <laughs> All in vain. I guess in the 1800s you probably could get, like, cocaine suppositories or something. <laughs> mm. just, just shove a few rocks of this up your ass. <laughs> Make Shub- it feel better. Jebediah McGillicuddy's all-cocaine suppositories. <laughs> if you're in terror, let it pass by shoving cocaine up your ass. <laughs> Back then, they didn't do it to smuggle it. It was just the method of delivery. (laughs) All in vain, because death, in approaching him, had stalked with his black shadow before him and enveloped the victim. And it was the mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he neither saw nor heard, to feel, uh, you you just said to feel before, the presence of my head within the room. Is this a poem or is this a story? Make up your mind. Yeah. This guy thinks that he's like a poet. It's so pathetic. <laughs> right. right. 
Uh, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I hate to bring it up. I'm getting some Jeff the Killer 2015 vibes off of this. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. You, you're not going to believe this. What? All right. I just looked it up. I Googled Edgar Allan Poe creepypasta, right? This is the same fucking guy that wrote Raven.exe. <laughs> same fucking guy. You know that huh. story that story where the screen goes blank and it just says nevermore in Comic Sans? Over and over again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh when I had waited a long time, very patiently, without hearing him lie down, I resolved to open a little a very, very little crevice in the lantern. So I opened it. You cannot imagine you can't imagine how stealthily, stealthily until at length a simple dim ray uh, like the thread of a spider shot out from the crevice and fell upon the vulture eye. I like how he turned into like a TV late night TV pitch man in the middle there. <laughs> you can't imagine how stealthily. <laughs> Every repeat is just him pausing for laughter and applause. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was open, wide, wide. Open mm-hmm. and I grew. He just curious. keeps repeating all the same word that doesn't like it's, you. It doesn't add anything. Is he getting paid by the word or something? Oh, maybe. In my essay, I hope to fully, clearly, and wholly tell you. About it. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew furious as I gazed upon it. I saw it with perfect distinctness as a dull blue with a hideous veil over it that chilled the very marrow in my bones. But I could see nothing else of the old man's face or person, for I had directed the ray as if by instinct precisely upon the damned spot. Jeez. Sounds like one of these gang stalker dudes. This guy has an eye, and it's weird, and it was put there to send me a message. Why? What is the government trying to do? Dude, is it Sans from Undertale? Oh my god, it could be. (laughs) Legitimately. Yeah. Holy shit. He sat up from the bed and looked at me. (laughs) He said... (laughs) I stabbed him. <laughs> uh, he he locked me in place and said that he would he had, could stay there as long as I could. And I have and have I not told you that what you mistake for madness is but over acuteness of the sense? Yes, you did at the very beginning. We already read mm-hmm. that. Now I say there came to my ears a dull, a low, dull, quick sound, such as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. Why are you enveloping watches in cotton? What do you do all day? Yeah. You stalk this dude all night. Do you just do pinky shit with watches all day? Maybe uh. back in the day there was nothing else to do. Apparently. <laughs> back, somebody, oh my god, somebody out there, please repeatedly edit the Wikipedia page for Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> to say that one of his hobbies was enveloping watches in cotton. Watch fondler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the watch fondler. Red flag, know, they... how did you find me? <laughs> I will get published in Popular Mechanics. What? What is your experiment? I have taken the humble mechanical pocket watch and enveloped it in cotton to <laughs> dull its sound. Yes. You won't know what fucking time it is. <laughs> I call it a watch silencer. <laughs> <laughs> I call it a what? I knew that sound well, too. It was the beating of the old man's heart. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum stimulates the soldier into courage, the cowardly dog. They really need to focus this up. Is it about an eyeball? Is it about cotton envelopes? Is it about hearts? Mm -hmm. It's too hard to keep track of because you've got a watch ticking, apparently. You've got a drum playing. You've got a heart beating. How would you... There's just, like, too many sounds going on in this room. I also don't really understand where they're going with this. I'm not crazy. Let me explain how I totally am. Right, it's stupid. What's, what's what's the end goal of this? It's all it's just, it's, uh, it's an absolute trope. It's like been done to death. Right. Yeah. And I don't know where this trope comes from, but it's same. It's yeah. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Now, to be fair, this was written a few years ago. Maybe during that time period, this was new for its time. You know, maybe not many people had done it yet. I don't know. I, was, I got. I got to be real. Elias, cut this out. Do we? Do we need to keep reading this? We're like halfway through, maybe a little bit over. Uh, I mean, I usually 
am for reading something to the finish, even if we all all three of us hate it. Okay, let's. But well, yeah, I, I won't, I, oh, I'm I, sorry I, I brought it up. Let's I was going to say, this. but fuck the story. But, but all right, let's, whatever. Yeah. Let's just try. Let's try and hurry it up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Let's try and okay. Cut, like we'll cut it here and like try and be upbeat and entertaining. Oh, yeah. Elias, don't forget to pick up my cocaine suppositories. Okay, cut it here. But even yet, I refrained and kept still. But scarce, uh, scarcely breathed. I held the lantern motionless. Nothing is happening. I tried how steadily I could maintain the uh, ray upon the light. Uh, the, the the oh my god, <laughs> that's not really <laughs> just your lexing fault. out. That's not totally your fault. The sentence is terrible. Mm-hmm. It's I a very complex to... sentence. <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fair, you have to be very undyslexic to not know how to not read Poe. I tried how steadily I could maintain the ray upon the eye. Legitimately, that is a hard sentence. Yeah. Meanwhile, the hellish tattoo... Meanwhile, at the Red Flags headquarters, no. Oh, I like it when the puppies rest upon me and they can feel my heart... Red Flag, you're <laughs> getting really dark. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, the heart increased. It grew quicker and quicker and louder and louder every instant. The old man's terror must have been extreme. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> he did a sick ollie out of his bed and kick flipped me in the face. <laughs> uh, it was bogus. <laughs> every midnight I go up and down the half pipe with a single flashlight. The old man's name was Randy. Oh, God. <laughs> I squirted uh, some Sunny D into his eye. <laughs> uh, it grew louder, I say. Louder every moment. Mm. Do you mark me well? I have told you that I am nervous. So I am. And now, at the dead hour of the night, amid the dreadful silence of the old house, so strange a noise as <sighs> this excited me to uncontrollable terror. Wow, the terror is uncontrollable, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For minutes longer, I refrained and stood still, but the beating grew louder. Louder! I thought the heart must burst, and I now a new anxiety seized me. The sound would be heard by a neighbor. Yeah, right. The old ma- your neighbor's going to hear ridiculous. a heartbeat. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. If, it's fucking stupid. If you're, first of all, you are his neighbor. What, are you going to hear your own shit? Secondly, <laughs> probably would just think it's another nut wrapping watches in cotton. Probably. Yeah. Uh, the old man's hour had come. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once, on, uh, w- once, once only. Don't! And <laughs> in an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. I enveloped his face in cotton, light, much like you <laughs> would do a small mechanical pocket watch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the police will never find me if I wrap myself in cotton. <laughs> <laughs> I then smiled gaily. Uh, so it is uh, a gay story. So, well, no, it's it's a gay woman who's killing this old dude because the old dude doesn't approve of her lifestyle. Clearly, oh that's the God. subtext here. Guys, she's destroying the male gaze. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. Yep. <laughs> How do you smile gaily, though? Is that is that what we're gonna do? Or are we gonna apply a feminist critique to the Telltale Heart? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's everything is political. Yeah, True. Yeah. Everything is political. Everything's political. <laughs> Even Nothing the is song. fun if you can pick it apart yes. and apply your agenda. <laughs> you killed all the art. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is <That'd be> sad. <laughs> But for many minutes, the heart beat on with a muffled sound. This, however, did not vex me. Really? I'm like, so, I'm like so not vexed by it. It's yeah. whatever. It would not be heard <laughs> through the walls. At length, it ceased. The old man was dead. I removed the bed. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Uh huh. Yes, he was stone, stone dead. Uh, the wrestler. I placed, my, I placed my hand upon the heart. <laughs> And held it there many minutes. There was no pulsation. <laughs> mm. It was stone dead. Mm-hmm. His Eve would trouble me no more. His Eve? Eve. So, somebody typoed well, I. <laughs> hold Eve? on. Is it his I or this Eve? 
As in, like, this night would no longer trouble me. It has to be I. Come on, the story is all about I, 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 I. I think I think this is actually an account of Becky the human being with her first roommate and oh. just does not understand proper roommate etiquette. Right. I hated how he kept having these eyes all the time. <laughs> I feel like that wasn't in the roommate agreement, so yeah. obviously I had to remove them. Uh, anyway, his Eve if, would trouble me no more. Eve. Uh, if you still think me mad, you will think me so no longer when I describe the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. The night waned Whoa. and I worked hastily, but in silence. First of all, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head and the arms and the leg. That's what dismembering means. Yeah. Thanks for spelling it out in the second sentence. Right. This guy's definitely getting paid by the word. Yeah. I then took up three planks from the flooring of the chamber and deposited all between the scantlings. Scantlings, ladies and gentlemen. I then replaced the boards so cleverly, so cunningly, that no human eye, not even his, could have detected anything wrong. There was nothing to wash out, no stain of any kind, no blood spot whatsoever. I had been too wary for that. A tub had caught all. Ha ha! 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 Uh, don't worry about it. A tub has caught all, Lisa. Ha ha! So they're talking, they say, ha ha. You know, this is really reminding me of Jared Leto's Joker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty much what this is. It's just the main character is just the Joker. Yeah. You might as well write damaged on his forehead. Right. Mm-hmm. I was thinking Poe could get drunk tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> uh, when I had made an end of these labors, it was four o'clock, still dark as midnight. As the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking at the street door. Hmm. I went to open it with a light heart. For what I had Hmm. now to fear? No. For what I had now to fear? No. For what I had now to fear? No, you're saying it wrong. Oh, my God. For what had I now to fear? Jesus Christ. As in, what do I have to fear? (sighs) Guys are both fucking stupid. No, it's just poorly written. No, you're stupid. There entered three (laughs) men who introduced themselves... With perfect suavity. Why do I picture? <laughs> why do I picture it as the Three Stooges? <laughs> the, three, and Eddie. the Three Stooges in the Telltale Heart. <laughs> Boy, douche, that... We're here to investigate a moita. <laughs> no, they already mentioned Plank. I think that this is going to be Ed, Ed and Eddie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ed, Ed, and Eddie in police officer uniforms. Stupid Ed boys. He had an eye. <laughs> a horrible a shriek. eye. <laughs> A shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicion of foul play had been aroused. Ooh. Information had been lodged at the police office. And they, the officers, had been deputied to search the premises. Back mm. back in the good old days of America, back when we had adequate response times to yep. murders. Yep. You know, we, we, we need to get back to the, the family values. Of On which 18. we used to rely. Lucky there's a bizzamy guy. Lucky there's a man who absolutely can do. Read a bunch of stories and spell his wine. <laughs> uh, my turn? Yes. Yeah. I smiled for what had I to fear. I bade the gentleman welcome. The shriek, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man, I mentioned, was absent in the country. Hmm. Where I left him. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search, search well. I led them at length to his chamber. I showed them his treasures, secured, undisturbed. <laughs> it was his collection of cotton pocket watches. In the enthusiasm <laughs> of my confidence. Oh my god, we have the name of the neighbor. <laughs> How you doing, my name's Cotton Pocket Watches. <laughs> <laughs> Why they call you that? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> On account of my weird eye. Yeah. What? <laughs> my eye looks kind of like a, a, a pocket watch full of cotton. No, it doesn't. I, you know what cotton looks like? I've been blind for years. How, how did you How did you injure your eye looking at a pocket watch in cotton? <laughs> what? You know, he does He does allegedly have like a thin film over his eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To fill the one, one might even call him Cotton Eye Joe. <gasps> oh. That's what it's about. The, yes. the answer the entire time was just the floorboards. So this is that's, an, 
This is an alternate theory pasta. This is a theory uh-huh. pasta about Cotton Eye Joe. Okay. No, I think it's a, like if you read into it, this is a prequel to Cotton Eye Joe. It's part of the Cotton Eye Joe cinematic universe. <laughs> it's going to be a really sad day when uh, Matt Pat decides to make a third channel and it's just song theory. Oh, God. And he comes up with stupid shit like what we just described, but for real. Does Britney Spears actually enjoy hitting babies? <laughs> What's the real reason behind Britney, bitch? <laughs> uh, I, d- d- in the enthusiasm of my confidence, I brought chairs into the room and desired them here to rest from their fatigues. And desire, uh, okay, God, yeah, and desired them here to rest from their fatigues. Yes. While I myself, in the wild audacity of my perfect triumph, placed my own seat upon the very spot beneath which repose the corpse of the victim as opposed to the corpse of what else in a story i don't well know. maybe other people have died in the story it's just not mentioned mm. maybe the floorboards were placed there recently and a series of tenants have fallen in there over time <laughs> by accident <laughs> please come in officers may I offer you some <laughs> cocaine suppositories <laughs> Dude. Oh, wait, no. I forgot the Three stu- Stooges. Oh, well. Don't mind if I do. Or the Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I don't know. Ed, Ed, and Eddie taking cocaine suppositories. Rebecca you Sugar, have like, you drawn I mean, this? They look a lot like jawbreakers. So. <laughs> yes. They're they're sitting in a row, so he hands three suppositories to the guy on the end, and he puts all three up his own ass. <laughs> God damn it. And they smack him on the back of the head. Those were for us. <laughs> Life has many cocaine, Ed boy. Oh, sorry. Here, you can have them back. <laughs> No, no, that's all right. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're going up your ass. It's not like they're going in your mouth. What if... Listen, I am not afraid to put things in my ass that have been in other people's asses. That's all I'm saying. There is a real medical procedure for uh, solving certain probiotic yes, issues yes. by taking they other take people's... take a jawbreaker and, it and shove yours. it up your ass, I know. Uh-huh. No, we're talking... Listen, don't derail us from an important conversation about poop transplants. It's like, what's the actual... I'll have to look it up later, but... That's Earth literally what it is. It is a poop transplant. Well, I want to know what the proper medical terminology is. Fecal transplantation or something? When a gentrified neighborhood in New York City becomes home to three family members who happen to be giant CGI turds who talk poop transplants from Pixar. Anyway. Bacteriotherapy. Oh, God. There you go, boys and girls. There there you go, boys and girls. Welcome to Children's YouTube. We're talking about bacteriotherapy. That depends on the poop now, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, Sargon of Akkad hosting kids' YouTube channels. <laughs> All right. D- DP, did we lose you? No. Okay. No. You just muted you, yourself. You, to... you lost you lost me at Sargon of Akkad YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> Children. <laughs> It depends on your age. Please signify here. All right. The officers were satisfied with their cocaine suppositories. My mm-hmm. manner had convinced them. I was singularly at ease. They sat, and while I answered cheerily, they chatted of familiar things. But, ere long, I think that's another typo, I felt myself getting pale and wished them gone. My head ached, and I fancied a ringing in my ears. But still, they sat and still chatted. The ringing... My- Uh, My knees, they began to grow weak. uh, My arms, very heavy. Mother Spaghetti, still staining my shirt. Yes. Ah, the filthy Italians, I thought to myself. (laughs) The the filthy Irish. (laughs) The filthy Irish with their pasta. (laughs) The ringing became more distinct. It continued and became more distinct. Okay. (laughs) Distincter still, until the distinct was was so distinct... That you could not confuse it for anything else but distinctness. So, I want to point out all the millennials and Zoomers in our audience. They're picturing a guy sitting there and his ears are going... Yeah, it's no, it's it's like an old-timey like phone ringing. You, you should yeah, look up on YouTube, yeah. uh, like, rotary phone sound effect. Uh, what you should do is, like, look up um, uh, making a bomb and then blow yourself up. <laughs> Uh, what if you? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, welcome back to 
<laughs> cartoons for children on how tos and today we're going to be talking about how to make a bomb with the stuff under your parents' sink. God damn it! Somebody I'm do a oh. book report on the Telltale Heart. What if you uh, did Anarchist Cookbook? Yeah, you blew yourself up. That's right. Somebody out there with balls of steel should make a YouTube ARG exactly like that. Welcome to YouTube Kids. <laughs> I thought you were going to say make an anarchist cookbook. Yeah. For kids. Anarchist cook Oh yeah. Get mm. get that uh lazy town kid to sing about it. I don't know. She's still a kid or did did she age normally? Oh, um, she I'm, I cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny. She's 45. <laughs> no. No. No, she's not. <laughs> No, just you just <laughs> pulling numbers out your ass. DP DP is like, uh, no, she's not. I, I'm aware of what age she is. <laughs> uh, she's 18 in the month. I've been keeping track. <laughs> I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling. DP's like, she just got new shoes. Her back aches a bit based, based on the way she's like <laughs> bending over and holding the small of her back when she jogs. <laughs> she's getting a breast reduction. God damn it! She's getting a breast reduction. She doesn't know it yet. DP. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Good God! <laughs> She's getting a breast reduction when I get when I get around to it. I'm feeling a bit lazy. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> That's DP's version of the Telltale Heart. He sneaks into her room and gives her a breast reduction. Oh, uh, the Telltale boobs, I guess. I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling, but it continued and gained definiteness until, at length, I found that the noise was not within my ears. Oh, great. We have a magic noise that escapes ears. Okay. Uh, I knew this would go supernatural. Yep. I mean, that's, I mean, that's so disappointing. I mean, mm-hmm. we need you to f- to fight Elias in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. I mean. <laughs> Elias, when you're fighting in the pit, I want to hear the music from the original Star Trek, the fight music. Ah, oh, yes, the Star Trek fight music. <laughs> Half a half a second, and you get flagged. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no doubt, I had grew very pale, mm. but I talked more fluently and with heightened voice. No, Yet Jay. Sound... Jay talked more fluently. That's a J written there. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a spot on my screen. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay, yeah, it's an I. You were correct. <laughs> <laughs> Yet the sound increased. And what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound. Much such a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. We get that, it. that wasn't DP misreading. It is written like that. Much such a sound. Mm-hmm. Much such a sound. Like that's we're, we're obsessed with putting cotton watches. And I grasp for breath and stroking out. And yet the officers had heard it not. Much such a sound, Mm -hmm. rolling around on the ground. With cotton wide open. (laughs) I can hear the watch tick. (laughs) Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, You know, there's a a new therapy out there that'll help you relax. How about you put these cotton balls in your ears? Mm -hmm. Uh, It was a little weird, but okay, sir. Um, Mm -hmm. I talked more quickly, more vehemently, but the noise steadily increased. I arose and argued about trifles in a high key with violent gesticulations, but the noise steadily increased. Why would they not be gone? Um, Uh, He really is Italian. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's a bibbidi boopy. Do you hear that a bibbidi boopy coming from the floorboards? (laughs) (laughs) He Um, he stomps on the boards. Hey, Ma, shut up. (laughs) Hey, Ma. I'm talking to the police here. Yeah. Hey, you hear that sound over there over here? Yeah. It's it's just so unfocused. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's long since shit the bed. Yeah. Uh, I paced the floor to and fro with heavy strides, as if excited to fury by the observations of the men, but the noise steadily increased. Have you noticed this whole time we haven't like gotten to the point of what it is we're actually talking about? Yeah. Nope. Like they we don't get you know what are the police are asking about or what he's saying uh, the title is the telltale heart and just like a no sleep story there has been no heart in this instead we're hearing watches and you know like when when are we going to hear a heart or something all we hear is mm-hmm. this fucking watch all the time mm-hmm. i don't get it oh god they they hear it and now they're going to hear me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god 
oh god, what could I do? I foamed <laughs> and raved. <laughs> he just he, he sprays the he like sprays foam from the ceiling and starts a rave. <laughs> Drops a bunch of ketamine and just starts foaming from the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Drop a bunch of ketamine foam from the mouth. That's how we do I it in the South. I swore I swung the chair upon which I had been sitting and grated it upon the boards. The noise arose all over and continually <laughs> increased. It grew louder, louder, louder. And still the men chatted pleasantly and smiled. Was it possible they heard not? Almighty God. No, no, they heard. They suspected. They knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. This I thought, and this I think. Wait a minute. But anything... Is this about us? Are we the three people making a mockery of his horror? I was thinking, like, this is what he's telling to the guards or the the policemen as it's happening. So this is, like, testimony, which is weird. I think this is going to end with, and now, the three of you reading this, the Fear Fiction Podcast people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which would be a good twist. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They knew they suspected they were making a mockery of my horror. I thought this, and I think. But anyway, I was better (laughs) than this agony. Anything was more tolerable than this derision. I could bear these hypocritical smiles no longer. I felt that I must scream or die. And now again, hark! Louder, 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 louder. Scream or die, the much less uh, successful horror-based counterpart to Funny or Die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Villains, I shrieked. Dissemble no more. I admit the deed. I, Skeletor, tear up the planks. Here, here. It is He-Man. And He-Man is the South or whatever. It is the beating of this hideous heart. That's it. It just ends there. Huh. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some of the comments here. There's Uh, one. (laughs) There's one here. OMGWTF, did I just read? Uh, 10 out of 10. Obviously, this guy's an idiot. Yeah. No. Yeah. We get this comment here from Wayne Clark. The story is brilliantly written. I can't think of a better justification for sanity from an insane person. A better justification? These these commenters are happy with anything. Yeah, They're just yeah. not critical thinkers. Like the justification <sighs> is I this dude had an eye and I hated it. That's not a good justification to kill somebody. He had an eye. I hated it. Can I make it any more obvious? Can I make it more any more flowery? Goddamn. So I mean, I, I, if I were being charitable, I would say mm-hmm. that it's possible you could have sort of like that fridge horror where it turns out like the heart he was hearing was his own heartbeat because of the guilt, and he just misinterpreted where it was coming from. But the story is so mm-hmm. badly written that I can't be that charitable and say that that was what was intended. Yeah, it would. This needs like so much work to get adequately across what they're trying to convey. Yeah. And I think on on some level this does have a conversational tone that I think was was kind of nice, but it just doesn't forgive all of the story story's obvious flaws. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I did look up the author at Grellin Poe. He does have a deviant art page. It's uh. nothing nothing but drawings of incredibly obese women who are anthropomorphic watches wearing cotton. This has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts are Abysme, Dead Palette, and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Voice over by Atticus Jackson. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic on YouTube to stay up to date on new episodes. So, hardly able to give it together, I see. Mmm, pretty underwhelming, honestly. I wanted something with a little more tooth and a little less eyeball and heart. If I wanted to hear someone say, I'm crazy, let me show you how, over and over again, I'd go consume some good media like Joker. In fact, I'm going to go watch Joker again. Bye. Telltale heart? More like telltale shart. Because this story shit the bed harder than I did. Back when I was a kid and I was staying at my friend's house and I didn't want to use the toilet because they had a different kind than I was used to at home. Ah, well, okay. I can see Poe was a tad on the uh, approachable side of horror for you, but I assure you, it only gets more terrifying, confusing, befuddling, and mind-altering from here on out.
And it will come straight from the sea. But that's for next week on the Fear Fiction Podcast. Now this ham radio soap opera is brought to you by... Corvid Brand Glass Eyeballs. Have you lost an eye or two in the Great War? Or maybe you saw some of that horrible avant-garde art by seditious artists like P. Blow Picasso and made a note to jostle those unwashed eyeballs right out of their sockets? Heck of a roo, I even knew a fella whose eyeballs flew straight out of his head when he heard that amoral Calvin Coolidge got elected to Prime Ministership of America. Well, I've got good news for you. Stop being an eyeball as sap and tallywhack some of these baby blues right into your cornea caves. Corvid brand glass eyeballs aren't like traditional false eyeballs made out of actual glass. Glass is made out of sand, you screwless rube. You can't be walking around with sand in your eyes. What will all the midwives and Twinkle Johns think of you? Golly gee, no. Corvid brand glass eyeballs are made entirely out of space-age fiberglass and entirely disposable. Unlike competitors that expect one eyeball to last you a lifetime, we offer a service of delivering fresh eyeballs directly to your house on a monthly basis. Each box comes complete with two fresh Corvid brand glass eyeballs, the Dr. Raven's genuine fiberglass ball wax to keep your eyes rolling smoothly as women talk crazy dame talk, and of course, the world-famous subdurable anti-hemorrhaging cream to prevent sudden-onset head explosions. So head on down to your local Southernbrook's department store today and ask the sales rep about the Corvid brand glass eyeball subscription box today. That's Corvid brand glass eyeballs. You'd have to be blind not to see the difference. That's what he's plugging. Abysme is plugging. His new album, Choo 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 Choo. Yep. It's, uh, it's basically an entire Vaporwave concept album based around the Beatles. Hmm. And uh, I play all their songs backwards at a lower pitch. Hmm. Uh, and a lot of porn sounds <laughs> played over it. <laughs> is, there, is there any artistic merit in playing a MIDI file of Beatles songs and having text-to-speech do the lyrics. Yes. Would that Revolution, be an artistic statement? Revolution, Mary, number nine. <laughs> Revolution, number nine. Strawberry fields. Nothing is real. <laughs> and nothing to get hung about. Maybe you could just do a, a, a cover album of Beatles songs, but instead they're sung by Chills monotone. <laughs> God damn it. Track number 15. She loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got my mind on you. I mean, Chills did put out a music video of him rapping, so... I read the news today. Oh, boy. Do you think this news is real? <laughs> Tell me in the comments below. That's kind of what I hate about a lot of Beatles chills. songs. Oh, no. <laughs> but, Chill, chills is fine. But a lot of Chills. I chills. How many Beatles songs are just them plainly speaking about dumb bullshit? Dumb bullshit, yeah. <laughs> No, so like uh, I I recently for a sketch like had to listen to how Chills talks, so I like actually listened to the video, and every time I'm fucking baffled at how a human can actually speak that way. That is their actual speaking pattern. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's why he's famous. I don't know. 